My thanks to Bring Me to Life Radio, and welcome to the Cinema Scribe. When the have nots stare down the ample resources of the haves, there's almost always sure to be a degree of envy involved. How is it that they come to acquire what we haven't? They might legitimately ask. Why can't we have some of that? Those questions have merit, too. But how far are the have nots willing to go to get what they seek? That's a crucial issue posed in the Oscar winning social satire, Parasite. Times are tough for the Kim family. With money and work hard to come by, the foursome struggles to survive in their cramped, run-down apartment. Family matriarch Chung Sook, played by Hai Jin Jang, seeks to earn money folding pizza boxes, a job at which she's not especially suited, while her jack-of-all-trades husband Kai Tech, played by Kang Ho Sung, will take anything he can get. Their former military officer son Kai Wu, played by Wu Sik Choi, can't seem to find a position that matches his skills, while his graphic artist and computer operator sister, Kai Jung, played by Sodan Park, languishes without a job. Things look bleak. However, when Kai Wu's friend Min, played by Su Joan Park, pays him a visit, a new door opens. Min, a college student who's planning to embark on a year of overseas study, works as a private English tutor for a wealthy family a job that pays quite generously. He tells Kai Wu that he's recommending him to take over in his absence, an offer that his unemployed friend finds tempting but puzzling. Kai Wu doesn't believe he's qualified for the job, but Min reminds him of how well he scored on college admission tests and that he could readily take over for him. Min explains that his teenage pupil, Park Dai He, played by Jung Siso, is the daughter of an affluent businessman. Park Dong Ik, played by Sun Kun Lee, and a stay-at-home mother, Park Yong Kyo, played by Yo Jong Jo. Min adds that Dahe's mom is rather dim and gullible, someone who could easily be bluffed into hiring Kai Wu as his would-be successor. Though skeptical, Kai Wu agrees to an interview, during which he discovers that Min's description of his prospective employer is right on target. He tactfully schmoozes Yong Kyo, who is quite impressed with Kai Wu's alleged pedigree. His hopes and enthusiasm are further raised when he meets his student, to whom he takes quite a shine, an attraction that is apparently mutual. It looks like the job is his. During his visit to the Park family residence, a lavish home built by and once inhabited by a famous architect, Kai Wu also meets the family's young son, Da Song, played by Hyun Yung Yong, an intelligent but hyperactive child with a penchant for creating colorful but bizarre works of art. Young Kyo boasts her pride in her son's accomplishments, but says she wishes she could find someone who could help guide him in his efforts, a statement that gives Kai Wu an idea. He says he knows a skilled art instructor who could provide Da Song with helpful coaching, someone with whom he could put in a good word. Young Kyo jumps at the chance, unaware that Kai Wu is talking about his sister, a relationship he doesn't reveal. In no time, Kai Jung is working as an art therapist for Da Song, a position on which she sells Young Kyo after convincingly pointing out the recurring troubled imagery in her son's artwork. And, thanks to a referral from Kai Jung, Kai Tech soon becomes the park's new family chauffeur, after the crafty art therapist sets up the disgraced, now former driver, played by Kyun Ruk Park, into being fired based on trumped up phony allegations. Something similar occurs when Kai Tech manipulates the dismissal of the family's longtime housekeeper, Moon Guang, played by Zhang Yun Li, creating an opportunity for a glowingly recommended Chung Suk to fill the now vacant caretaker position. Given all this good fortune, one would think the Kims would be grateful for their newfound prosperity. However, having gotten a taste of the good life, they look for new ways to feather their nest even further, and by even more nefarious means. And when the Parks go away for a camping weekend to celebrate Da Song's birthday, the Kims move into their employer's home to party down, unapologetically availing themselves of the comforts of affluence. They enjoy ample food and drink, 
and celebrate their unforeseen luck. But the festivities take an unexpected turn when a late night visitor, former housekeeper Moon Guang, appears on the doorstep claiming she's come by to collect something that she left behind in her hurried departure after her unforeseen termination. By giving Moon Guang access to the house, the Kims set off a series of events that will change everything. It's a situation further complicated by the park's unexpected early return from their weekend getaway. Suddenly, all of the Kim's gain are on the line, an ominous development that doesn't bode well for the future as things go from great to disastrous in short order. Now what? When seeking to improve one's lot in life, is it acceptable to do whatever it takes, even if it means resorting to underhanded tactics? In all likelihood, the answer would depend on who one asks and what their circumstances are. Those responses and the outcomes they're intended to engender depend on one's beliefs. And those beliefs, in turn, play an important role in what results, which may not be what one expects. Given that our beliefs faithfully materialize what we're thinking and feeling, we had better be careful what we ask for, as the characters in Parasite find out for themselves. The Kims, for example, believe that life has shafted them and that they're perfectly entitled to and justified in pursuing whatever it takes to make up for lost ground. What starts out as a mostly genuine employment opportunity quickly transforms into a scam, one that pays off handsomely but that is also rife with pitfalls waiting in the wings. But given the family's history of desperation, they're willing to take the chance to get the result that they believe they're owed. Similarly, the Parks are also anxious to get what they want, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to obtain the desired result, even if they aren't as diligent as they could be in investigating their prospective employees. In fact, as members of the affluent class, they probably feel good about themselves in offering employment to those in need, that their generosity makes up for whatever economic disparities set them apart from the working class that is otherwise unable to share in society's good fortunes. Because of this perceived magnanimity, they're able to sleep comfortably at night, even if they're unaware that their actions have unwittingly contributed to the problems that cause such fiscal inequality in the first place. A chief reason why this course is so problematic is that their beliefs lack a fundamental element, integrity. By failing to be truthful with ourselves, our beliefs become tainted by considerations that can derail or thwart what we claim we seek to create. The Kims, for instance, say they're looking for gainful employment, but all the while they're secretly plotting to find ways to rip off their employers and acquire other perks. Given the deception involved, is it any surprise then that things can go awry? A little integrity could go a long way towards staving off problems. But such a result would depend on integrating it into the belief formation process from the outset, something a parasite is unlikely to do, as seen here. Dissecting the struggle between the classes through the lens of human nature and personal motivations, regardless of class status, provides the foundation for this rip-roaring dark comedy, one of those rare films that grabs your attention and holds it from start to finish without letting go. Building on themes explored in such previous works as Snowpiercer, writer-director Bong Joon-ho presents a riveting, ruthless offering that undeniably makes its point but without being heavy-handed or cartoonishly over the top. In doing so, the filmmaker dishes out a wealth of utterly hilarious humor about subjects that ultimately prove to be no laughing matter. Its razor-sharp writing, the fine performances of its excellent ensemble cast, and a thought-provoking message that should give us all a lot to think about, combine to give us a film that never disappoints and consistently satisfies. Parasite has been tremendously successful, as a cinematic phenomenon. After five months in release, it's still playing in theaters, something almost unheard of in contemporary film distribution, especially for a foreign language picture in an American movie market where many viewers are more than a little reluctant to read subtitles. Having deservedly captured the Palme d'Or honors at the 2019 Cannes Film Festival, the event's top prize, the picture went on to win numerous other awards, including four Oscars, most notably the Best Picture Prize, the first foreign language film ever to do so. Writer-director Bong Joon-ho has put together a true cinematic masterpiece, a term I use sparingly and only when merited. 
but given the accomplishments of this offering, those accolades are genuinely merited. It's unfortunate that we live in a world where so many unfairly go without. One would think that the fortunate would be more willing to share their abundance with those in need. What's more, it's understandable that the destitute would take drastic measures to preserve and protect themselves. However, when the downtrodden begin resorting to means like those used against them to obtain what they want, are they any better off in the end? One could say that they are themselves no different from the parasites who have oppressed them. And we all know what ultimately happens to parasites in the end. I'm Brett Marchant, The Cinema Scribe. Thanks for listening. A lifelong movie fan and a longtime student of metaphysics, Cinema Scribe Brett Marchant is the award winning author of Get the Picture. Conscious Creation goes to the movies, Cautiously Created Cinema, The Movie Lover's Guide to the Law of Attraction, and Third Real Conscious Creation goes back to the movies, all of which provide reader-friendly looks at how the practice of conscious creation, also known as the Law of Attraction, is illustrated through film. Brett maintains an ongoing blog about metaphysical cinema and other self-empowerment topics through his website, www.brentmarchant.com. He's also the movie correspondent for the Good Radio Network and New Consciousness Review Magazine and Radio, with additional writing contributions to Smart Women's Empowerment, The Happy Guide, Library Journal, BeliefNet, Vivid Life, New Age News, and Master Heart Magazine. Brett holds a BA in Magazine Journalism and History from Syracuse University. Again, check him out at www.brentmarchant.com.